the painting itself came to us in 1984 on the death of a woman none of us had ever met, Marianne Kuhner. She and her husband George were Hungarian Jewish uh, refugees from the war and had settled in Los Angeles. And there they met William Valentiner. And he became friends with the Kuners um, and a lot of uh, the other expatriates in Los Angeles. And probably with his encouragement, the Kuners began collecting art. When Valentiner left Los Angeles to become the first director of the North Carolina Museum of Art, they arranged to leave their collection to the museum while retaining lifetime ownership. In the case of the Cronach, there was a uh, prospectus provided by a gallery in New York, but the letterhead had been cut off, so we didn't know what gallery it was, but it was, it had the format and, the, and just the look of a New York old master gallery prospectus uh, from the 1950s. So that's where we just assumed that the Cuners had purchased it. There was no provenance information before that. Um, that is not uncommon. In any case, we didn't think much else about it. We hung the painting, and then in 1999, we received a letter from the World Jewish Congress. The, they had information that the painting had been stolen during World War II uh, by the Nazis. And so it, that really began the long process of ferreting out all of the information. Was it shocking? Probably. Uh, was it surprising? Probably not. Uh, considering that so much of our collection was acquired in the 10 years after the Second World War, uh, which was a good, very good time to be buying old master European art, but it was also a time when so much of the uh, looted art of Europe was finding its way to the New York art market. So this letter from the World Jewish Congress was something of a clarion call for us. It was the first instance where an object in our collection had been challenged um, as having been stolen um, by the Nazis. So we took this extremely seriously. Um, it, it had the potential for being hugely destructive to the museum's reputation if we did not handle it properly. So we entered into a long exchange, discussions, um, with first with the World Jewish Congress, um, but very soon they passed their portfolio, the case to um, the New York State Banking Department. And Monica Dugo uh, became the person that I talked to. She and I forged a very strong professional relationship over the course of months. It was um, of trying to develop trust on both sides. She began to provide us with documents, photocopies taken from German military archives and uh, from other archives of, of the Second World War that documented um, a Cronach painting of the same title, same size, uh, in the collection of a Vienna businessman, a very uh, an industrialist named Philip von Gumpertz, um, a very prominent Jewish family. His family had been knighted under the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, they had vast industrial and land properties, not just in Austria, but in uh, Czechoslovakia and elsewhere within the old Habsburg Empire. Uh, Monica represented uh, the heirs of Philip von Gumpertz. Uh, he had no children, but the heirs were his great nieces um, who were living in Vienna together. And they and their parents before them, and Philip, who survived the war, had dedicated their lives to recovering the, the family's property, particularly the art collection. And they started amassing the documents, which included the Gestapo order to seize the property of Philip von Gumpertz, the inventory. Um, the, the Nazis were amazingly legalistic. 
um, in their theft. And they, uh, so they had printed documents that would allow, the, you know, all Gumperts had to do was to sign over everything, which was a huge amount. And that included their art collection, 